legacy of changes. We've got a very interesting show for you tonight with some amazing panelists. Let's begin with Sir Robin, uh, who actually has uh, appeared on the show before, but there's a story to that. Robin, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. It's a little late on my end, but I'll, uh, I'm staying up for this. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. We appreciate the dedication. Uh, another of our panelists, uh, hailing from Team Liquid, uh, with a very awesome uh, article on economy there, which is how I met him. Uh, it's I am Caustic. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you, dude? Oh, not too bad. Nice, nice. Finally, we've got Boss Terran from Team One Step Ahead. Uh, Coming here to share his thoughts on Legacy of the Void with you. Hey guys, what's up? And finally, we couldn't do this without Passer, our streamer, so a big round of applause to him as well. Let's jump right into the questions though. Um, very first thing I want to talk about. Forbes recently published an article that was talking about how StarCraft has lost its relevance. The article cites a large decline in public interest in non-mobile RTS. What can Blizzard do to either regain its le legendary place as king of esports or B, appeal to a wider audience in the manner of games like Clash of Clans? Um, I mean, Blizzard is still at the top of the esports scene because of Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. But um, in StarCraft, um, uh, related speaking, I'd say that um, what they're doing right now is the right step to go into. I mean, they've screwed up a bunch of things with StarCraft 2. Mm -hmm. Now they're kind of fixing them up with uh, Allied Commanders and uh, Archon modes. So they're, they're going in the right direction, in my opinion. Okay. Any other opinions? Yeah, I agree. I agree and disagree at the same time. Like... Modes like Archon Mode and Allied Commander is mm -hmm. great for, you know, just casual players and such. Um, I don't know if it's going to help the esports scene at all in the same way that mm -hmm. the arcade doesn't necessarily help the esports scene. Uh, they're great for casual players, but it doesn't really give the same kind of StarCraft experience. Right. The arcade is definitely not your regular StarCraft, but there's a counterpoint to that argument because especially in Warcraft 3's history but even back in Brood War a lot of people only played the arcade games so it could revitalize some interest couldn't it I don't really feel so it's not exactly the same because when we go and talk about something like Warcraft 3 we're also talking about a lot of the social features that were within mm -hmm. the client um, and the way that everything worked back then, I mean, in Warcraft 3 and even in StarCraft Brood War, I played a lot of those custom games, so mm -hmm. I was one of those more casual players. Um, but I wasn't necessarily uh, big into the esports scene at, at that time. Mm -hmm. It was great for playing the game in general, um, but I don't think it actually had any direct impact to esports. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's a really good point, but I want to bring up one thing. Um, Archon mode is actually a, a bit of a step towards both sides. I mean, it appeals to the casual scene, but again, it's also a great it's a, a great way to uh, uh, showcase esports. We already know there's a couple tournaments going on. There's Red Bull, and there's a couple uh, base trade tournaments for uh, Legacy of the Void, and just in the beta right now for Archon mode. Um, I think it's a really good way to show the maximum potential of the game. Like, um, one player can't do nearly as much as two players can, so there's a great amount of things they can do in the esports scene with that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just to stick on Archon for a moment, I mean, you say it's only, it's not going to, you know, be good for esports, but honestly, I was talking a little bit about this uh, last show when when uh, we had a hiccup, but, um, you know, Archon mode really does help the players smooth each other's weaknesses out, and that's not to be, uh, you know, underestimated in terms of the impact that Archon mode will bring to, you know, competitive dual teams because, uh, you know, everybody has their shining moments, their big strengths that like, oh man, if I was, I'm watching this game and as a semi-pro, these are my strengths and this person, you know, wasn't able to hold that off, but I know exactly how to hold that off. Oh man, if only I was in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't because there's a bracket and you got to have the mastery of every single matchup and every single strategy and response of every matchup. So when you're 
pairing with somebody, Archon Mode allows you to essentially even out each other's weaknesses and strengths, and you can really uh, have really great synergy. And I think the team aspect also allows um, a little more, a, a little better marketing with uh, the your the a- actual self because now you you're almost like its own team rather than just oh they're just this a Zerg player you know you know, rather than Terran. Sometimes people you know don't really get as much name recognition during the shows but as you if you watch Red Bull you know that really um, they re- they really show the players they they brought up the, the, the their um, their audio their communication between each other that's another you know little hit pretty much hinting at those players and their personalities and all that kind of stuff and we talked about how the Archon mode also is really good for um, you know producers better entertainment higher quality oftentimes and um, so, yeah, Archon Mode, I think, will help esports. And then mm-hmm. to go back to the original question is, uh, is are those things going to help esports? And you say no, because it's not directly related to esports. And it's increasing the fan base because, yes, you played custom games, right? But the thing about it is, is if you look at numbers and you look at uh, the number one most important Important thing for an esports is an active player base. That is incredibly important. You look at League of Legends; they have worse player to esport fandom ratio than StarCraft does. But because they have such a massive player base, they promote it and they get the word out there. And a certain percentage is actually going to tune in. I, I freaking loved Brood War. I had actually no clue that there was you know some kind of esports scene or anything like that. Mm-hmm. When I got you know when I got in Counter Strike, you know a few years later. That's when I kind of discovered esports for my very first time, right? And so, I think uh, having an active player base is directly related to uh, a growth in an esport because you're getting more eyes. And so, just because it's not, an even even if it's not esports and it doesn't directly help it, it will indirectly. Well, then going back to Caustic's point regarding arcade maps, he was saying that yeah, I can if I can just get in there really quick uh, to it. address that. I don't disagree whatsoever. Like everything that you said, I completely agree with. Um, more, what I was saying to my point is that like having these features inside here aren't inherently going to create a more active user base, right? There's definitely got to be really? more to it. I do think that these are features that, like, if you get the users in there, they will enjoy, and that's fantastic. But I don't think that they're going to be major drivers for player influx. So if we can get the players into the game, I think these are going to be additional tools um, in order to keep them inside the game, keep them interested. And like you said, you know, great entertainment value um, will definitely help out just, yeah, with everything that you said. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just kind of agree to disagree at that at, at that point because, um, you know, the those kinds of, like, it really just pulls the active player base, and you don't think those kind mm-hmm. of features will consistently bring people back. But even if you're just talking about social features, Archon Mode is absolutely a social feature. And so you're they're adding oh, yeah, at least sure. one social feature. So at the minimum, one social feature, and if Allied Commanders is in a corner, I mean, even that is obvious, is, is will lead to a po- po- positive growth in player ba- active player bases. Because there's another mode that will keep people attached to the game longer and uh, or even forever. So, you know, um, I, I just I agree with that with that point. But you know, okay, we'll see. I guess. Well, that's uh, that that's yeah. pretty interesting, and I'm glad you guys brought up Archon mode because apparently macro is so easy that everyone's macro will be equal now is like a thing in Legacy of the Void, which I don't personally understand, but. What do you guys think? Is that something you agree with? No, I disagree. Um, I think I think StarCraft's a really hard game. Um, a lot of people uh, below the, the highest level don't realize this, but Koreans have been complaining about StarCraft being way too hard since like forever, right? Mm-hmm. There's people like Flash who have like a bunch of interviews um, online that say that StarCraft's way too demanding. If you have to play way too much, and then it puts a way it puts way too much strain on your body. As uh, Flash does have did have a surgery in back in Brood War for his wrists. Um, so basically, a really good way to a really good countermeasure to that is Archon mode. I mean, you don't have to multitask that much. You don't have to spam 50 Marines while splitting everything, and um. And also, like, dropping mules and stuff. You don't have to larva inject during engagements. Star- StarCraft's a really difficult game. Mm-hmm. And um, they're addressing that, I think, in the wrong way with the macro mechanics. Because uh, Zerg, 
ha- they're addressing Zerg's difficulty pretty well because Injex mm-hmm. is a huge, uh, basically the biggest macro mechanic that Zerg has. Mm-hmm. But Chrono Boost and Inje- uh, Chrono Boost and Mule, not that much. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I kind of agree with that sentiment. Um, the idea that macro will be easy in this game. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, e- even if you were to get rid of all the macro spells, um, which I know has been part of the conversation with them adjusting them and all of that, and I think they should get rid of those spells for numerous reasons beyond simply um, making the game like more accessible to mm-hmm. play, uh, which goes back to my bringing in um, more users and such, right? And, like a lot of the reason why people have left is because like for your casual players, like they just can't possibly manage to play this game um, and enjoy it. It's way too stressful on them. I couldn't agree with that more. Robin, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly glad that they're kind of reducing the, or looking to reduce the macro mechanic, uh, ma- macro mechanics in general, mm-hmm. because I, I am a huge macro player. My average uh, game is 76 workers produced drones. So it's a little inflated comparatively other races, but nonetheless, I always macro. So as someone who does always macros and values my skill in that, I'm still for it. And honestly, the reason why is because once I reached a certain level and you don't think about what's the next step. Oh, God, what's the next step? Oh, oh I need to do this. Oh, shoot, oh, I'm behind on this. Oh, I got to do this. And that's your only thought process. And then it turns into, ooh, what's, what am I seeing? How do I read this? Uh, what is this guy doing? Is he trying to trick me? And then now you're thinking strategically and how to alter your ta- tactics based on your opponent. Now you're actually like playing a, a new game. The game's different, mm-hmm. and it's, a, a, it's more beautiful in my opinion, and it would be great if a higher percentage of people could enjoy that aspect, that that new game. And so I'm all for it. Um, I think there are plenty of other ways to shine and outplay people with your APM and multitasking. And, uh, and you know, with Archon Mode, it really will raise the skill ceiling at the same time. Sure, the macro skill ceiling won't go up, but you're, you're going to have to fight against those two people with two people. Mm-hmm. It's going to still be incredibly difficult and It'll be more entertaining, in my opinion. So one I think thing, Archon Mode, mm-hmm. it's going to be sweet. <laughs> well, one thing that uh, actually I'd like to hear you guys' opinion on is the Archon Mode tournament that we recently had because you saw professional-level players there making plenty of mistakes on macro, micro, and plenty of other places, too. And this was two pros merging into one Archon. So this seems to be proof positive that this game is still plenty difficult. Um, I think they haven't been given enough, given enough time. Like you see how, how the meta is always changing, especially for Terran, where they removed the mule, then they added it back. We had to like not make orbitals for an entire week, mm-hmm. and I think pros are still trying to figure out what to do because now we have like a mule and a supply drop every couple uh, couple minutes or whatever, right? So I mean, they're they're playing around with builds. Like you might see them banking a couple of stuff because they don't know the exact build order that they've obviously completely memorized over years in Heart mm-hmm. of the Swarm. So yeah, if you give them some time, I think Archon Mode is actually perfect. Like maybe not with two players, maybe three players, and they can you can really true, see true perfection in StarCraft. Mm-hmm. True, true, and that would be great. Could you imagine seeing a perfectly played game of StarCraft? What would that even look like? Yeah, I, I think that would be great for the for the esports scene. I think people would love to see that. There'd be action everywhere. There'd be three people controlling drops. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? It it would be it would be fascinating, dude. So um. How do you guys feel about Overlord drops moving to Lair Tech? I, yeah. as a Zerg player, um, I'm with Cats on this one. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's. It was never really overpowered. Mm-hmm. Overlords take forever to get to get to the other side of the map now because the game starts like with twelve workers, mm-hmm. and so there you're you're rarely going to have more than over one Overlord in position, which means you're really only. You know, doing some kind of eight lane pressure, unless you're l- really doing like some crazy all in, and those put you behind uh, substantially. So you got to do a, a tons of damage. But from cats, in my experience, we both kind of see it as um, you know, over an over uh, an over nerf in a sense. They're just that in Evo Chamber, I'm okay with because I always play macro, and it sounds like cats does a macro overlord drop kind of play as well, and it doesn't feel overpowered at all. I mean. It's mm-hmm. almost against the adepts, 
Um, I don't know what else to say, but Lair kind of just killed it because you can't do any kind of early harass, and then one drop later on, it can work, but if there are warp gates, obviously two second warp ends. And uh, I mean, it, it's it's it can still work with Terran for sure, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It it really stops any kind of Overlord drop play because I, it was already slowed down enough mm-hmm. because Overlord. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Like I, I feel like from a design and balance standpoint, it's a step backwards. Um, basically, instead of encouraging different styles of Zerg play, uh, mm-hmm. they're eliminating them uh, even more. In Heart of the Swarm, we see a huge problem where for Zerg. You're, pretty much your situation, like your uh, victory conditions, is basically building a lot of stuff and attacking mm-hmm. constantly. That's pretty much your goal. And that's after, like, obviously, joining up initially, right? So it's like you get your economy out of the way and then you just make tons of stuff and keep going, 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 going. Is there some kind of middle ground between having it at hatch tech and having it at layer tech? I don't think you really need a middle ground necessarily. I think you need to look at other areas of Zerg. Um, uh, mm-hmm. To the point where, like, dropping those units won't necessarily be overpowered, right? Like, maybe you just have too many units at that point in time, which, again, is going back to the macro aspect, where yeah. in Heart of the Swarm, right, is just all macro all the time. We lost a lot of the diversity that Zerg used to have. I mean, if you go back to Wings of Liberty, right? Like, or even Burrow Bur- used to be a very, like, prominent um, stylistic play for Zerg players. Mm-hmm. When do you ever see Zergs get Burrow anymore? It's like a miracle when you see it happen. Like last yeah. year when Scarlet used Burrow and burrowed Baneling. It's like we hadn't seen that in years because mm-hmm. it was no longer relevant and still isn't even necessary anymore. But when you go back and look at those Wings of Liberty games, right? It's like if you didn't have like burrowed Banelings like setting them up and all that sort of stuff, you would die to Terran and bio pushes and everything. Yeah, compare um, how many so, options like, Terran like have to Zerg. Terran. You know? No, yeah, I agree. The, I think the overload drops made the TVZ matchup way more dynamic. Um, it just made it more interesting, and it gave us Zerg a new uh, uh, point in attack, the Terran player, the Paras player. I mean, Terran could always do early drops. We could always do mind drops with our, with our Hellions. Atos can always warp in, like, he could drop the sentries, warp in a bunch of stuff, and then force field off the ramp. Um, I, I think it's, like, a great part of Zerg that was always missing in StarCraft. The drop, the drop feature is always there, but it was never used. It was never in the meta. It was, it was a huge design flaw, which, which got, uh, which got, which got, which got improved and um, reinvented. But uh, I think, I think if they add any new things, they should never over nerf them because those are the things I need. They need to test the most. Yeah, I, and on that note, I mean, right when speed boost metavax came out, it was insane. It, people, you know, cried op, all that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, with the overlord drop. You know, most people are saying, eh, I don't even know if that was really required in, in an esports sense. Maybe lower leagues mm-hmm. never expect something just to drop in their side base and they don't have the pile on there and they get surprised because they have no idea it's coming. But in an esports sense, it's really, uh, it's, it, it's, it hasn't been that crazy of an issue right now in terms of being overpowered. And those kinds of drop, that kind of drop play, if you can kind of know it's coming early and you expect, certain positions that they're going to drop one single stalker stops it mm-hmm. i mean it's 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 is it really overpowered to have one stalker with, and that's the counter to it i mean it's really not uh you know it, it really what didn't was not op now and after time it's going to be even a little less used and it's going to have the niches and on certain maps you're like ooh, overlord actually would work here and then now in the maps also dictate the play styles which is mm-hmm. exactly what they're trying to do so mm-hmm. like the I completely agree with you guys. I mean, they just, and, and Travis, I mean, you just need to, uh, yeah, just kind of give it some don't time. Hurt. Yeah, don't and hurt. They kind of like tie ranch. together all the pieces that we've been talking about recently. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, Sir Robin, to your point about like the strategic aspect of the game, right? This part that you're finally able to access because you've gotten kind of your macro out of the way. Um, right? Like, Strategy makes the game more beautiful, right? That's the really enticing part of an RTS. It's a real-time strategy game. And if we're going back and talking about, you know, StarCraft II having lost its relevancy, I feel like it's because the strategic portion of the game is being overwhelmed by the sheer mechanical demand. 
Yeah, you have to right? climb so, a certain wall first before exactly. a certain mountain before you can even show your you know strategic intelligence and whatnot. So yeah, absolutely. If they drop it a little bit, I mean, it's nobody's gonna have perfect ma- macros still, but it'll I mean, it'll it'll allow a larger portion of the player base to actually enjoy that, and, and then. Yeah, I also think it will just make better games, too. Like they were saying, I mean, it really isn't interesting to watch a game where these injects and you want to even show the injects. They're, we don't even want to show them. And the, and the way to not show them is essentially uh, to, to always have the players focusing on their screen on certain engagements and constant harassing or constantly defending other people's harass while you're harassing. And those kinds of things, more action. And that's what they're looking for, and so definitely uh, coincides with their the Blizzard strategy, and mm-hmm. so so yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like the like Blizzard's um, intended result mm-hmm. and the way they try to go about it are actually counterintuitive to one another, right? So we're seeing Blizzard like they're nerfing mm-hmm. Overlord drops, so they're reducing strategic choice. Uh, they brought back macro mechanics after you know a very short period of time, just trying to see if they could remove some of them. And so you're, they're once again increasing the mechanical demand. Like all these things go counter to what they want to do, which is mm-hmm. have more strategic diversity and such, like what they're talking about with maps and everything. Okay. Well, dude, these are some great points so far, but we're coming up on our first break. If you're watching this uh, live, uh, we will be back uh, in two minutes. Two minutes minutes guys uh if you're watching the vod just go ahead and click the next button big thank you to our sponsors zealous web uh for making this episode possible and guys we'll see you in part two hey guys thanks for watching if you like this content make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button thank you so much and have a great day